All right, Katie McGough- McLaughlin. See, I, I knew I'd screw that up. <laughs> Katie McLaughlin, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I'm pumped. Yeah, this is cool. So just uh, where are you coming from? I like to ask my guests. Yeah, I'm in Berkeley, California, um, where I've been for the past couple years, I guess. So yeah, I'm up here in Berkeley and NorCal. Fires are going on right now, so it's pretty crazy right now. But yeah. Yeah. Welcome. We're seeing a lot of stuff on, on the news, obviously. And I've, I've had friends from Australia who, who know that I've moved to LA and California and, and they're asking me about the fires and stuff, but you guys are really kind of affected up there. What's happening with it? Yeah, it's been pretty bad up here actually for like a couple of weeks now. Um, you know, like just the air quality has really not been great since like maybe mid to the end of August. Um, so we've been out of the pool randomly kind of dealing with that, but you know, I would rather like play it safe and everything. And there's so many other things going on in the world that like us getting out of the pool every couple weeks, like we can handle that. So yeah, it's been pretty crazy. The like sky the other day was like orange for like mm. all day long. It was like literally like we were on another planet, but yeah, mm. it's pretty crazy right now. Kind of sad, but it's strange isn't it how you you finally get back into the pool with with all the covid restrictions and stuff and then something like this pops up and happens it's uh it must be it must mess with your head a little bit right yeah it's actually pretty funny we got into our pool in berkeley about like two weeks ago and like we've been kicked out of the pool like maybe four or five times uh just within that two weeks being in berkeley so it's definitely like we're starting to get more and more of a routine, but, and that's what I really miss, like having a routine and like very consistent training and everything. And, you know, we got our pool back, but then the fires started to pick up. And so we're, I think because the past couple months, we've all like learned to be able to adapt. So like the fires kind of hit us every year and yeah, it's just, just is what it is. So hopefully we get in a, good routine soon and the fires start to calm down not just for our training but in general they should calm down so you said two weeks so what 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 have you been doing in the months before kind of just getting back into berkeley pool yeah so we were kind of bouncing around the bay area a bit we were out in san rafael at nathan swim school for a little while and then we were mainly in like walnut creek um at renting lanes there uh so it's not too far it's only like 25 to 30 minutes away but yeah, it was, we made we made it work. Now you're swimming at Berkeley. You, you've obviously uh, graduated now. What what did you get your degree in? Uh, yeah, I got my degree in American Studies, which is like our like create your own major kind of thing. Um, so I did the history of consumerism, and I got to write like a thesis at the end of my undergrad degree, which is pretty rare. That's mostly like a graduate thing. Uh, so. Yeah, it was, I loved it. I like kind of missed school low key because it was a little bit fun, but yeah. Have you thought about going to graduate school? Yeah, I have. I don't know what I want to do yet. So I definitely think I want to go back to school. I just don't know what I want to do, if that makes sense. Because I don't know, school's fun for me. Some of my friends like kind of make fun of me for it, but (laughs) I like it. Nice. Well, listen, let's kind of dig into who you are and, and how you got to where you are today. Um, I was reading a little bit about you and I noticed that your, your mother was a swimmer. She swam at USC, correct? Yep, she did. And then, and then dad played um, college football at Indiana State. So what was it like growing up with athletic parents? Yeah, for sure. My parents like always encourage. I have a younger brother also who ended up playing water polo, um, not swimming. But yeah, my parents always like encouraged us to be like active and they would fill every little hour with like some activity for us. Like whether I played soccer until high school, volleyball, like into a little bit of high school, I did track, everything. So they were always encouraging us to just like go be active and play and like all that. So, you know, I'm really grateful that they were athletes to know like how important it is to be active and like that side of me as like an athlete and a competitor is like runs in my family. So it was cool that they understood a lot of times when maybe I would get home from practice and be a little bit grumpy because I just did doubles and was at school all day. Not that it was okay that I was like a little grumpy towards them, but they would understand like why I was not necessarily like 
being really chatty and things like that or like when I get really nervous for like meets and stuff they kind of understand because they were athletes as well so yeah I'm really grateful my parents never like put pressure on me either to like swim even though my mom swam if anything she was like soccer is really cool like go <laughs> ahead and go play that but yeah so they just like really let me figure out what I loved and there was no pressure anywhere and yeah I'm really grateful for them I was the same with my daughter. Uh, my 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 uh, ex wife played college soccer, and and so that you know we we grew they grew up playing soccer and and yeah. swimming, and and I was always like, go do the soccer thing. That that sounds better, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of how my mom. My mom didn't play soccer, but I loved soccer, and she was like, that's really great. Like, keep it up over there. <laughs> so what was the what was the the final thing for you in terms of making that decision, how did it come to, to you wanting to be a swimmer? Yeah, I like always knew I wanted to be a swimmer and it was really like my parents who wouldn't let me specialize per se when I was young. Like I grew up doing like summer league swimming and I loved it. And every year after summer league, I'd be like, okay guys, like year round this year, like I can't wait. And they'd be like, no, 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 no. Like you have more time to like do other things swimming will be there so I don't know I guess with swimming I just like loved being in the water and like you know I grew up in Southern California and the sun's out 99% of the days so getting to just like enjoy the sun and like the pool and the water was always fun and I loved all the friends I made through swimming so when it came to high school and I kind of like had to decide like that was really something that also played into it was like I love the social aspect that I got from swimming. Like I got to go to practice every day after school and like every day, like soccer is only a couple times a week, but like I got to go every day and hang out with my friends. Like that was kind of fun. Like yeah. can't do homework yet, mom. Got to go to practice. Like see ya. So yeah, I don't know. It was just that and like getting to like race and like set goals for myself and challenge myself. And I don't know. I just, I just, love swimming in the water and yeah when did it become evident that you were really good at it i mean you you were um one of the best high school swimmers in the country so between the age of nine and kind of going to college when did it re when was the turning point for you where you were really really good at this yeah i think like at 2013 um world trials i actually got third in the two fly which in that moment I was so relieved that I didn't have to go like to a big <laughs> person meet and like be with all the were you? national teamers. 2013. So I was maybe like 15. Okay. Almost 16, I think, about. Mm. And I was just like, that is a lot. Like they're very fast and like scary. I would be terrified the whole time. So like mm. I did the best that I could do right there. I got third. Like Woo. So I think like from then I was like, wow, okay, like this is actually turning out pretty well for me. And before then I got to go to some like junior team camps and that was really special. And I think like making trials in juniors, like before other people maybe my age did, I kind of like started to be like, okay, we could really get somewhere here. Um, so yeah, I think that meet 2013 world trials, like in my head was the turning point but i think like looking back leading up i always like wanted bigger goals than some of like my peers maybe did yeah so you you have this meet and and you finish third so that's when you kind of you're probably on college recruiters radar before that but at that point like you're you're it like everybody's after you what was it like that turnaround after that in terms of people coming reaching out to you and and making that um making their, their programs known to you in terms of their interest yeah honestly i had no perception of what was going on in recruiting until like my junior year probably when like i started to know people that were like older than me that were going to like, like meeting people through the junior team that were like committing to schools. That was kind of my first exposure to like college recruiting was like seeing people older than me doing it. So it wasn't even necessarily my first experience as like myself, like talking to mm. colleges or seeing coaches or anything like that. So yeah, I guess like my junior year, I started to kind of think about like 
where I wanted to be and like what was important to me in programs like everyone else. I don't think I had a different way of going about it. So I kind of just like my parents helped me and I narrowed it down to like my top 20 schools my junior year and just kind of kept my options open and like talked to a lot of different people that I trusted, like some of my coaches and friends and people that were older than me that had gone through the process, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I narrowed it down to like, I was pretty sure I wanted to stay like here in California just cause like I am like, I love California and I love the beach and my family and you know, the culture of California is really awesome. So that's something that was really important to me. I figured out and you know, I like, there was something about Cal when I came and visited that like, I just like loved it. It was such a unique place where like school was so important as well as swimming. And that was a big thing for me, but you can get that at a lot of schools. Sorry. I'm kind of just like rambling here. I don't know, I guess like. Well, did you stuff, take other trips outside of California? Uh, no, I didn't. I took, well, I went on like a mini junior day to like Texas okay. during like the Austin mm. Grand Prix. Um, but I kind of like narrowed it down to like the California schools, like mm. of USC, Stanford and Cal. And I took junior days to all three of those. And then like when I was planning my recruit trips, I was kind of like already pretty leaning heavily towards coming to Cal. Um, and so I actually ended up only taking one recruit trip mm. because I don't know, I just kind of like knew this is where I wanted to be. And, um, yeah, so it wasn't too daunting. I guess I kind of just never let it get out of hand where I was trying to have like, or where coaches were like trying to talk to me and I didn't really, I knew I didn't want to go there. I was like pretty upfront with all the coaches. Like if I didn't want to go to a school, I think I would just kind of like let them know instead of stringing them along, which helped me manage it instead of having like a ton of coaches to talk to. It was really just like, I made it important to me to like spend my time with the ones I really wanted to get to know. If that makes mm. sense. Y yeah, absolutely. Um, were you coached by coach Rose at, mm -hmm. at the time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, was. was there any questions of philosophy differences or challenges in terms of, you know, going from his program to, to say Terry's program at that point in time? Yeah, for sure. I think like that was something that kind of like drew me to Cal, I think as well. Um, you know, at Mission Viejo, we were really not even, I wouldn't even say yardage based, but like we did a lot of yardage. Um, yeah, it was yardage lot, based for sure. <laughs> yeah, a lot more swimming. Um, and Terry's program is not so much that we're, and at that point, I kind of wanted something different. Like, I wanted a change, you know? Like, I knew in high school that I was in the best shape of, or in my head. That's kind of what got me there. Is when I stepped up on the blocks, I knew I was in at least just as good of shape as everyone else or better because that was my training. It was to be in the best shape I possibly could. And that gave me so much in high school and still does now like that's that base that I had with coach Rose like I it gives me confidence still to know that like I sometimes do like to go train in the distance lane over mm. there and just like grind away a little bit like mm. that's something that I won't lose so but at that time I kind of knew that like okay I'm kind of in the best shape I can be right now like that only that can only get me so far if that makes sense. So I want to find like a program that can challenge me in different ways. Like I know I can hold this time butterfly forever, but like my walls really weren't amazing. My starts, my turns, my like details, really what I had going for me, I was in really good shape and like I had good technique, but I wanted like to clean up the little things. Like if you watch some of my races from high school, I do like two kicks off my wall in like a sure. hundred fly short course. Like yeah. that's not yeah. what's going to get me to the next level. So I wanted a program that would like challenge me to find new ways to get better. And I think that's still like something that's really great about Terry's program is this is my sixth year in her program and I'm still finding new ways to like get better. 
um, and move through the water better. So that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I want to, I want to dig into that decision, but definitely something that I was like looking for, I think at that time. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm also interested in, in this perspective too. You know, I, I came from Australia, so I wasn't part of this system, you know, this new age system that, that a lot of you younger athletes are in these days where they have this ranking system you know so you were you were ranked at the time i think from what i could tell you were ranked some like seventh in the country they ranked you i don't know something like that um but what did you think of that at the time how did that affect you was it positive or negative I and mean, how did you look at the ranking system at that point yeah i don't know how much like weight i gave that really um because i feel like there are so many different ways to rank a class like and honestly I didn't really know how they like did it and I feel like too there are some of my like Cal teammates and this is like very funny like girly of me to say but like there are so many of my Cal teammates that wouldn't have been ranked in the top 25 but brought more to the team than maybe someone sure. that did you know yeah. what I mean like sure, yeah so I guess in high school I didn't really give too weight too much weight and now like I, I don't know. I think it's definitely like a good way to find people that are good and whatnot, but I don't know. I just feel like there's so much more than just like a little, okay, you're number seven because you have these times <laughs> in these events and there you go. Yeah, sure. Well, what would, you, what would be your advice to kids who are being ranked right now? What would you say to them? Yeah, I think just like, I mean, take it for what it is and use it in your benefit. I think if you're trying to be recruited, um, but also like, don't let that like define who you are and who you would be as a teammate. Cause there's so much up to a teammate than just like your times. Um, and I think that's really important and something that's like really important for college or that, that college coaches look for. Like, I feel like being a good fit to a team, is more important necessary like if we're looking at the number five and number eight and the number eight is a better fit to our team we would rather have the number eight recruit than the number five so there's so much more than just the rankings and everything so yeah well you come from a program obviously that's known for for if people get through it they're hard workers right you know that's that's coach rose's program if you can get through that and you can come out on top of that you're a hard worker you know the value of hard work you know what it means um terry's known for building teams for sure you know so what are some of the things you've learned from terry in terms of being a great teammate and how have you incorporated that you know into who you are over the last four or five years yeah for sure i think like for me, getting to be like a part of Terry's teams for like those four years that I was in school, like mm -hmm. I would literally trade nothing for that. It was the best thing. And like, I feel like I grew so much as a person because of that. Um, I think some of the things I've learned is like to like be comfortable enough with being like vulnerable with people because I mean, I feel like coming into the program, I would be really guarded and not want to let people like see me sweat kind of mm -hmm. and not really talk about my feelings or if something makes me feel bad to like just deal with it. So mm -hmm. I think like in being a good teammate, I learned that like it's important that each person's voice is like heard mm -hmm. and what's important to them is like shared, if that makes sense, or like yeah. certain people's boundaries, things like that. Like. Um, I think another thing too from Terry being a good teammate is also like being able to listen to other people and not just okay I've done this this way my whole life so this is how it is but like maybe being open to listening to your teammates or friends or coaches and yeah I think like communication is really important um, yeah I think just that's kind of it like being vulnerable and communicating and you know not everything is about me and that's how it should be kind of that's my mentality that i've learned here how does terry get the best out of you how, how does she push you beyond what you think you're capable of doing uh, I'm, I'm interested in that you know in terms of like some of the best coaches i, I want to get into like how do they do it you know how do they get the best out of somebody that's already really good how do they take you to the next level 
Yeah, I think in the pool, there are like a ton of ways that Terry is really creative in our training. Um, I think just like for me, having more awareness of my body and how I move through the water, Terry's mm -hmm. really good at sensing like what little things that I need to pay attention to to help my relationship with the water grow. Give me an example of that. What would, what would that be? Um, I think something would be like just, I guess, hmm, what's a good example? Of, um, okay, I guess like for my kick, when I'm like kicking fly, mm -hmm. I do a really good job pounding the water down, or even free, really good job pounding the water down. Yep. And like for me, she'll kind of tell me to like slow it down, slow my kick down and like really feel the water, feel mm. like the weight, the water pressure on the other side of your feet and like mm. pay attention to that. And I think like it's not so much like the little details as it is like her cueing me to like raise my awareness of the water. Sure. So like, okay, do you feel like the water is helping you when you're reaching forward or do you feel like you're forcing your arm through the water? That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, sure. She also does a really good job of like coaching me to like race instead of to train, which is a whole, I think a really big part of Terry's training is like, we're training to be the best racers we can be. Mm. I'm not training to do 10 200s fly best average. You know mm. what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm going to, train really hard so that I can go this time in the mm -hmm. 100 fly, not that I can do 10 of them. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to hit race pace in practice, and maybe it's only 10 yards, but getting to feel that will, like, be better than me going a slower time for longer, if sure. that makes sense. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, so in the water, she just is really creative and thinks outside the box for sure. And I think outside of the water – just as a coach, she, for me, has helped me become the best athlete that I can be right now by, like, allowing me to have, like, a little bit of ownership and, like, think through what I'm doing as well, if that makes sense. So, like, yeah. she's not going to stand on top of my lane and say, okay, you have, you get 10 strokes and you're going this time. It's, like, she's going to let me kind of have a hand in how I'm going to be the best athlete as well, if that makes sense. Like yeah. she's not going to micromanage every little thing I'm doing. I think by like her helping me in my journey to be the best I can, she's like giving me pointers and cues and like also letting me figure things out because, you know, we go travel places and if she's not there, I would be lost if she were micromanaging every little thing. So sure. I think like as a coach, she does a good job of like letting me find my motivation and find things that I want to be good at instead of her telling me to be good at them, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's, like, it's nice know. to hear that you say that you're continuing to grow even, even six years into the program that you're still learning, you're still growing. I love to hear that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think that's, like, honestly why I, like, am still swimming, why I still love it, because there are things that I'm, like, still learning about my swimming or learning about the water, learning about racing, all that kind of thing. Like, yeah, yeah I don't think I've perfected it at all. So I, I do swim camps, as you know, um, through through Fitter and Faster, and, uh, you know, sometimes we'll do a clinic, and at the end, they'll, they'll give a review, and, and, and a parent will get on there and say, my kid learned nothing at this clinic. And I, and I think to, I'm thinking to myself, like, really? Like, <laughs> you had an experience with an Olympian or you had yeah. an experience with an NCAA athlete and you learn nothing? Then that's on you. I, I'm, yeah. I'm oh. sorry. That's completely on you if you learn nothing. Yeah, it is. I've been, like, coaching um, some high school kids the past couple months. And, like, I feel like that is something that has helped my swimming the past couple months mm. more than anything. Like, just getting to go and like coach these kids and like feel how excited they are to like do things or like hang out with each other or like they'll ask me certain things about their stroke and then it'll mm. make me think well yeah that's what you should do but do I do that so mm. I feel like even from like the like high school kids that I coach I've yeah. been able to learn so much from them and 
yeah, so that's impossible that they didn't learn from your camps. So yeah, exactly. Um, now listen, uh, the you had an experience freshman year that's impossible to to go past, and and I know that. I've talked to a couple of um, your ex-teammates. I talked to Amy Bilquist, and I talked to one of your ex-assistant coaches in Sarah Dunleavy, and, and they both told me that, um, you know, you don't enjoy talking about it. So I know that's not something that, you know, maybe that you, you've really explored um, openly before, but I, I kind of want to dig into it a little bit because I know that, um, you know, you, you had an experience where you had an, you had an accident and you broke your neck. I don't know all about it, but I kind of want to get your view on kind of what happened. It was freshman year. I know that. And you were one of the, you know, you had a lot of pressure on you in terms of who you were and how you were going to perform. And then, then this accident happens and it changes your trajectory a little bit. And so, so talk to us about the accident and exactly what happened. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, this happened my freshman year, January 2016. Um, I was like, I ran into the ocean and dove in headfirst, hit the sand. Pretty scary. Immediately I was like, something's not good, but like, I'm just going to try and brush this off. We were at like a little practice. Um, something's not good where? Like, what, what, did, what did you feel? Oh, my like that? neck didn't feel good and I was just like really stiff, but I could like walk and move. Like, I was okay. So I was like, I just need a sec like to walk this off and we're like we go back to our little like team huddle and like I'm like crying a little but trying to make it like not make a scene because I'm a freshman you know mm. I'm just trying to blend in with the crowd sure and like Terry looks over and she's like are you okay and I'm like no like I just hit my head in the sand and I just like need a sec and she's like are you like okay and I'm like yeah just give me like five minutes so the group does a drill I go do a drill in the ocean I walk in, go take a breath, and I'm like, nope, I, this isn't good. My neck, like, was just so stiff, and I feel like my upper body was just, like, on guard, if that mm, makes sense. Mm. So I, like, come out, I go, like, yeah, we go to, um, like, the University of Hawaii Health Center, and they were like, oh, she seems, like, okay. She's, like, walking, talking, and, like, I was pretty much, like, okay. Like, I could do everything. I just couldn't really move my neck but that's fine. But, um, yeah, so I got an x-ray and they, it showed that there was like a little like fracture on my C6, but they're like, but it might like not be. And we were like, no, okay. Hmm. So then I got a CT scan and they were like, yep, C6 fracture. I got my nice, beautiful neck brace at that appointment. That was really fun. Um, had some good memories with our like trainer and we spent a lot of time together um but yeah from there it was pretty scary i mean it, how, I didn't how, really... how far off was it from being like a a, a real serious injury T tell yeah. me that um honestly i don't know i had like a compression fracture which is like it didn't like it wasn't a compound fracture which is like a full vertebrae break I think it was like, it, I mean, it must have been like the side of my vertebrae that wasn't near my spinal cord, which mm. is literally so lucky. I don't know how close. Honestly, I never really asked how close it mm. was um, to being bad, but I knew that like, yeah, so I had my brace for six weeks. And if I got out of that or like anything kind of happened, I would have to get like a fusion um, of my vertebrae, which is like a surgery where they mm -hmm. kind of just like make sure everything's secure in there. So mm. I had to be like really careful um and i don't i don't know how close it was to like me being paralyzed or everything um but i did all i knew was that it was like very very serious to not break the rules or like let myself out of my brace at all um but so you could do no exercise during that time yeah i could like walk around and stuff and i did some like light biking um, but I couldn't do anything with my upper body. So even like holding a stationary bike, I couldn't do. I got in the pool a couple times and like kicked with my hands by my side. Even like the snorkel was weird to wear because it would like put my neck in a weird position. So I would like kick on my back kind of with my hands by my side. And like, I did that like a handful of times. Um, that was through like, 
I got my brace off like right after our Stanford dual meet. So like about six weeks later, a couple weeks before Pac-12s. Um, yeah, so I, honestly, I didn't really do much during that time. And the hardest part was low key school because if I'm in my brace, I couldn't like look down to like read or like at my computer. So that was like kind of hard to stay on top of because I kind of liked school and that would have given me something else to do or worry about. And it was just like uncomfortable, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, and then I swam at Pac 12s. I raced. <laughs> wow. Yeah, not honestly, not too bad. I think I was like 146 or 147 in the two free. So at that point, they gave you they gave you clearance. They're like, yeah, she's fully healed. She's ready to go again. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I got like another CT scan, and they were like, yeah, her neck is good to go. It's like, because you know when you heal, the bone sometimes like comes yeah. back a little stronger. So sure. it was like definitely intact. I had, I was not very like, I couldn't move too much, didn't have much range of motion. My like nervous system was still pretty on guard for like, honestly, a long while, just because like you have trauma to your spine and mm. it's not going to be that chill. But yeah, so I guess my pack 12s and I didn't do bad, but I didn't make NCs because we did all these like long course meets and I didn't really have a great winter season. So I was like, okay, Pac-12 is like, and looking back now, like, who did I think I was? Like, I was like, I can definitely make NCs right now. Like I've been swimming <laughs> for like a week and a half, two weeks. Like, <laughs> great. No, I couldn't. And I didn't, which is fine. Um, but yeah, so then after that, I ended up deciding to go home for the rest of like the semester through trials because honestly, everything was just like a little bit harder than it needed to be. And I couldn't focus on like doing my PT and like all that, like living in a dorm, you know, like doing my own laundry. It was just like, I needed to go home and have my parents like make my like meals. Yeah. And like do my laundry and help me out so I could go spend like an hour, hour and a half at PT like multiple times a week. Um, so yeah, that was a hard decision because, you know, freshman year, you know, I don't want to like abandon my team and like I didn't want them to think they did anything wrong. Um, so that was like pretty tough. And you is know, that is that part of the was the guilt associated with this? Is that why when I when I speak to two different people they tell me that you didn't you don't like talking about this like why don't you like talking about this uh honestly just because I don't really like getting attention from it you know I feel like everyone has their ups and downs in their life or in swimming and I get a lot of like you have had it a hard had a hard career mm. and yeah it has not been that easy but I feel like everyone has different struggles in the sport whatever that is and yeah it just I feel like I don't need to get like props from it if that makes mm, sense sure sure yeah. like it was a very hard time and I made it through it but I also feel like I get a lot of credit for doing everything on my own when I feel like so many other people worked just as hard as me for me if that makes sense like yeah yeah i just i don't know i don't want to like bring any like yeah i don't want to make myself okay. seem... all right yeah that makes more sense i couldn't figure it out i was trying to figure out like why wouldn't she like yeah. talking about like, i don't look. i don't mind at all talking about like my injury i just don't like need I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. No, I, look, listen, I, I grew up in Sydney, Australia, and, and, and we did beach swims all the time. So there's a there's a hundred times where I dive into shallow water, and, yeah. and, a, and a couple of those hundred times I hit my head, and I was like, oh, that doesn't feel good. But but nothing happened. You know, like I was – yeah. it just it – just, I hit shallow – I hit the sand, you know, and, and so I got lucky. And then I've got a couple of people that I've had on my podcast – you know, over the past 70 or so podcasts, Amy Van Dyke, and she ended up breaking her, her um, spine. And now she's in a wheelchair. And one of my best friends, Dave Dennison's in a wheelchair. So, you know, you can go from not having any effect to, you know, ending up in a wheelchair and then somebody like you who breaks their uh, neck in, in a sense, and then recovers from it. So there's, there's kind of everything in between. So I think, I think the, the real message is how did you, 
get through it? Like how, what were the, what were the ups and downs of it? Like what were the things that you had to do on your own in order to get through this? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think honestly the part that was the hardest of like overcoming was like my sophomore year or like 2017. Like that was a tough, like that was like the meaty part of it. Like trials, not making the team obviously was heartbreaking, but I feel like at that time, you know, I did everything I could and these are the cards that I had been dealt. And somehow that was like pretty easy to move through. Like, Mm. um, and it was like 2017 when I feel like I was like, I can now resume normal activity. Why am I not performing how I want to do? Like I didn't make the world's team in 2017. And that was when I was like, literally what is happening here that was when it was hard because i feel like my body in a sense still was recovering you know when you have like a trauma to your spine it's gonna take like a little while for your nervous system to like let go and like i feel like there were random little things that like i had to work through whether it was like shoulder issues or like my neck one week would just decide to like have spasms or like random little things that just like kind of came up and um kind of getting back onto the like mentality that I had and have now of like let's just find every day a little way to get better um and in that year I feel like I was looking at like all right I gotta get back to like my best like I was here and now I want to be here let's like make this jump instead of like looking at the little things so Mm. in order to like kind of overcome it I feel like I did a much better job of managing little pieces and also like like the little pieces like working on my mentality coming into training and working on my mentality around racing or you know my nutrition or like sleep and you know my mental health and just everything in general that I had kind of just like neglected because you know, in high school or my freshman year before my injury, it just, like, came a little bit easier. Um, So kind of, like, almost moving backwards to figure out how to, what I had going when I was swimming well, and, like, why was it that when I slept more and napped more that I was performing well? Hmm, maybe I should go back to that. Mm. Things like that, like, random little things, just kind of getting them in order, and I think, too, like, there were a lot of times where like I would lose motivation or like, that's what I was going to ask. Was there any point where you wanted to quit? Uh, I don't think I wanted to quit, but I think there were a lot of times where I was a little bit like complacent. Like I just, cause I love my team. And so quitting never kind of crossed my mind Sure. because I wanted to be throughout it. I wanted to be the best teammate and score the most points for my team that I could. So that was always there for me, um, which I'm really grateful for. But there were definitely times where I would feel like frustrated or like kind of just checking the box a little bit more than normal or, you know, like not being a positive teammate, you know, like feeling bad for myself longer than I should instead of like letting a bad practice just go, letting that affect the next practice and the next one, things like that. when I like wanted to be back to where I was, I would just be like, great. Okay. I guess I'm just not going to be good again. Like, but I did always have the like, but let me see what I can do at like NCs. Long course will be whatever. We'll figure that out. But like, I want to be the best teammate I can and do the best I can for them. Um, Did you ever feel like you got that poor me attitude? Like, did you, did you ever go through a point where it's like, why me? What, you know, poor me kind of thing. Like, did you ever get that? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I'm not like proud that I felt that, but there were definitely times that I felt like that. And I think like, that's something that is hard in general, just to like overcome that, like still kind of comes back, like little things will happen and be like, great, what did I do? And it's like, Mm. but I've done a much better job and I've learned ways to like take myself out of that instead of letting it infect me and like the people around me, Mm. if that makes sense. Um, Yeah, I think the biggest thing though that like helped me kind of overcome everything was like how consistent and how like great 
my like teammates and coach and trainers and family and friends were. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when I would not be motivated to do something, my teammates were always there like, come on, let's go. We got this. Or when I was like feeling bad about a set I just did, they'd be like, no, but if we did that last week, don't you think you would have been a little bit worse? Or, well, you did this. That was great on this set. So don't get too down on yourself. You know what I mean? Like when I wouldn't have been able to drag myself out of those bad times, my teammates and friends and coaches and family were always there to be like, no, you're on the right track. Everything's like, okay. When do you think the first time you, you gave yourself some credit for like, okay, I, I'm contributing to my team again. Like I feel good about myself. Like I'm, I'm fulfilling what I came here to do. Was there a moment you felt that? Yeah, I think like, I mean, throughout my sophomore year, like, I feel like there were a lot of times where I did give myself the like, I am contributing, but like, I want to be contributing more. Like, sure. I would give myself credit, but then also be like, okay, but this also can be better, which I'm kind of grateful for that mentality a little bit, because if I had just settled with the like, okay, well, I I'm did this for my team, like... Mm but I didn't do this, but I did this. So it's okay. Like I, there were a lot more times that I would give myself like both credit, if that makes mm, sense. Yeah. Like not letting myself be fully happy with what I was bringing to the team, mm. but also not times where I was like, I'm bringing nothing. Like, great. I just, I'm terrible. Yeah. So it was kind of definitely more of a back and forth, if that makes sense. Yeah. Who was the person who, challenged you the most at Cal or supported you the most or who, who, who was the one where you, you know, you feel like you identify with that person and they really got you and they got the best out of you. Was there somebody on the team that like that? Yeah, there's a ton. I mean, it's like definitely in different situations, different. I think like my class at Cal, I'm like super close with and I love them. And like, who was you know, in your class? Uh, Amy and Kathleen Baker and Jenna Campbell. Okay. Um, they were definitely like, I, cause I lived with all three of them at some point in my mm. college career. Mm. Um, and so they definitely knew like the ins and outs of me and would know like if I were having a bad day or bad practice, the right things to say or the right things to do or like something to get my mind off it. They were always there like supporting me and, um, kind of like when I was having a bad time they were the, they wouldn't be like oh let's leave her in her room like they would kind of help me get out of it if that makes mm, sense so sure. i think like it's not like just one person but i think those three especially like because they did go through the whole freshman year like with me i have a really special like relationship with all of them yeah yeah mm -hmm. now i i um i called you earlier today and i kind of prepped you on on a question that i wanted you to kind of give some detail on mm -hmm. i'm interested in the idea of competition like why why do people compete why do we keep coming back to compete you know what motivates us to compete like because look at the end of the day swimming is competitive you know and and all of us as swimmers as individuals we want to compete to win there's no doubt about that but we're not going to win every race but you know, somebody who's been in it as long as you have and somebody that has now gone through college and now is a professional swimmer, you know, I wanted you to think about why, why do you compete and what do you compete for and what does competition do for you? What, what does it um, bring out in you? So kind of give me your answer on what you'd come up with in terms of competition for you. Yeah, I think like for me, it kind of goes back to like my why of swimming is like, I feel like in competing, I'm, like, forced to find ways to, like, get the job done, if that makes sense, and forced to find ways to, like, become better and rise to the occasion, you know, there's no, like, there's nothing else, like, stepping up on the blocks and being, like, okay, I have two minutes here where I'm gonna give everything I can, and that's just, like, such a cool feeling that, like, I just, like, having a challenge, I love the idea of, like, a challenge and, you know, challenging myself but also like being challenged by others um and I think like you know I don't know I guess I just love the like getting to like find new ways to become the best swimmer or the best athlete and I think like for me something that's I'm also motivated by in competition is like 
I feel like I'm a product of like my environment at Cal and of Terry's coaching. And I want like the best light to be shed on my program and on Terry. Um, so that's something that's really motivating to me. Um, I feel like also like I'm also motivated by in competition, like similarly wanting the best, like, light to be shed on like my family and friends you know like they've sacrificed so much supportive and supported me in so many ways that I feel like by me competing and doing my best that's like me showing my like gratitude if that makes sense sure yeah. um, so I don't think it's I think I'm definitely motivated by like my surroundings and my su people that support me in my life and that's something that's really important so I think with competition that's like what I find motivation in like I want to compete to show the world that like Cal is the best and like all these people are great supporters and it's not just me swimming it's like everyone in my community that's like helping me be the best I can be if that makes sense yeah I stopped competing in 2006 at the age of 31 not because of injury, not because I, I was failing in any way. I just felt like I had done everything I wanted to do. You know, I, I got to a point where I'm like, I've done everything I want to do. So why is it that you're still competing? Why, what are you still searching for in that sense? Yeah, for sure. I mean, just, I still feel like there are things I'm learning about myself and <clears throat> myself as a competitor and myself as a swimmer, you know, I'm still mm. learning. Like, new ways to be faster and I feel like that's really exciting to me that like I don't feel like I'm just going to practice year after year after year doing the same exact thing like there's always something new to like challenge me in a new way um, whether it's in the pool or things outside of the pool like going from being on a college team to being pro that's a whole new challenge okay how do we handle that like how can I be the best I can be in this new setting okay things aren't working with parts of my body. Okay. How do I figure out with that to be the best I can be? If that makes sense. Mm. Um, yeah. Is there, is there something that, I mean, I mean, do you still think you could be, let's say an Olympian, an Olympic medalist? Do you still see that as something that could be in your future? Yeah, that's definitely one of my goals. And I feel like my mindset toward it is kind of like, I'm going to do everything I can to put myself in a place that that is like what I hope to achieve if that makes sense like I don't I think there are so many different factors and I'm just gonna put myself in the best position to be that kind of swimmer and you know that will take me like improving and I'm okay with that and like that's kind of exciting to like have a goal that I need to improve to meet if that makes sense yeah what did you learn from the first season of the isl swimming for the la current like what what was what was some of the cool stuff that you learned from that yeah honestly i feel like it was cool to like you know be taken out of like we got to go to that week in budapest and be mm -hmm. taken out of my normal routine and having to figure things out and that was something that was cool to learn like that in a totally new setting different without Terry without my coach that like I learned that I had like ownership of what I was doing and I wasn't just like a robot following a plan it mm. was like I learned to be like an independent athlete mm. and sure. um short course meters is also fun that was something to learn still yeah. learn <laughs> um yeah well, 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 you're about to go to Budapest for six weeks now, I think. I so <laughs> how does that feel? I'm excited, honestly. It'll be a nice little session. Um, it'll be interesting how it all works out, but I'm pretty excited, you know, to like go settle in and like, I don't know, who knows what it'll be like. I have literally no idea, but I'm excited. And a lot of my friends will be there, which is also really exciting for me. Um, yeah. One of the things I'm interested in is, um, you know, as a U.S. athlete, you know, you, you've made the, the world champ team in, in 15, I think, then you missed in 17, then you made it in 19, uh, and then you're trying to make the Olympic team. So there's kind of this, like, made it, didn't make it, made it, didn't make, you know, like kind of this, either you're the best in the world 
or you're not on the U.S. team. You know, it's like it's, it's really tough to be an Olymp uh, to be, to be an American swimmer. You know, you've either got to be consistently number one, or you're you're you know you have to wait another year to try and make it again. So, and you've gone through a little bit of that. So, how is it that you stay motivated to, or how how do you get yourself up to be consistent in terms of getting yourself on the U.S. team? Yeah, for sure. No, that's definitely a good question. It's hard being a U.S. athlete because you know if you're off your game, that next yeah. person is going to be right there. Yeah. Um, I think just kind of controlling my swimming and knowing, like, I can't control what other people are doing um, or how other people race or what other times people go or, you know, you can't – I can only control – my own race and my own swimming so I think that in a way works as a pretty good motivator day in and day out you know like I you know in the back of your head if I'm not really working too hard in a set I should be well that person that might touch me out in this race to get on the team might kind of be at their own practice working a little bit harder than me so you know it's always you're never like comfortably ah, oh, yes, I will forever be with this event on the U.S. team. Like, there's always something pushing you and something to chase after also, you know? Like, yeah. I feel like it's really cool to get to, like, swim the two free and always be chasing after, like, Katie Ledecky. Like, I know I can always try and go. Like, if I – Stanford and Cal were, like, racing all the time mm. and we see them a ton. And so it's cool to, like, not only be, like, have that part of the U.S. that's like always trying coming up and more and more it's so crowded but also for me to like get to look up to like people that are way better than me and like chase them also so there's kind yeah. of a two-sided thing. Yeah uh, most people I talk to say that they think you're an incredible 200 butterfly but I understand you've got this love-hate relationship with the two fly what is it about the two fly that it's either it's either you know well, well, tell me your perspective yeah. On it. yeah for sure that was like my event in high school like yeah I could just whip that out at any meet any time of the year any day I could go like no slower than a 210 just in practice I could push like a 211 212 mm. don't know how so I feel like because that was my focus for so long I like started to define my whole swimming career based on how that two fly went. Mm. Um, and you know, at all of these meets it like a lot of times it's like, it's either first or last. It's like either mm -hmm. at like nationals or world trials, it's first at NCs it's last. So at NCs we, the two fly and I got along a little bit better, but <laughs> it's always been that long course two fly that like, I feel like, just really weighs on me and for the longest time that's how I would define whether I was like a successful swimmer or not was if I was going uh, having a good two fly or not because and I don't know why that's why I defined everything I could go best times and everything but if my two fly mm. was bad I'd be mm. like great okay I failed so <laughs> but yeah yeah I think like that's kind of my relationship with the two fly and now I kind of just don't want, I mean, who would want that? Who would want that kind of relationship with an event? So <laughs> I just kind of push that guy to the side and I'm like, no, I have all these other events that I'm like, I can focus on. I'll do that to fly if I need to. I don't, I'm not excited by it because there is that like pressure of like, if I'm not doing well, then I'm probably in my head. Then I'm like, great, I'm just bad. That's so two flies bad. part of your identity. It's kind of like you, you identify with that race. Yeah, and it was just like years of like going to meets and it would be like two fly day and people would be like, oh, your event today. Mm. And it's like, okay, well, I some other things too. <laughs> you know, like it was just kind of, it would all like pile up a little. That was like Katie, two fly. And now we can sit at peace together, the two fly and I, <laughs> I think um but yeah I think that's the reason too I kind of just like train at like in my head my mentality is like train to be the best like swimmer and racer I can be I'm not training to be the best 
hundred flyer I can be or the best two freer I can be. I, I don't want to define one event as like who I am, if that makes sense. And yeah, I feel sure. like events change all the time for me and others. So it's like, I don't need to pick one that I need to hone in on and like, yeah. Is there an event you feel like you have the best chance of making the U S Olympic team on? Uh, I don't know. I think, I mean, I would love to make it in like the hundred fly and two free. Those are my two favorites to like race. Um, and two that I think I have like the best chance for, I don't necessarily have enough speed for a hundred free. Um, and the 400 is just a little bit too long for me. Can't swim breaststroke or backstroke really. So yeah, I think, and the two flies is always over there, but yeah, I think I would love to make it in the hundred fly or two free. Those are kind of my two favorites to race. So uh, let, let me uh, ask you this. When you're in your best form, when you're, when you're feeling great, what kind of mental state are you in? What are you feeling behind the blocks? What, what's going on through your head as you're about to perform at your best? Yeah, I think like for me to be at my best, I am not really in like a race zone mode i'm just like pumped to be there excited not really focusing too hard on like my race i feel like i'm or i would rather be more excited to like ch see what i can do kind of um i think behind the blocks i'm not like all right i must do this or i am this it's like no this is really chill like i get to go do this race this is gonna be fun um, that's something that's really important to me behind the blocks, which maybe is different than others who, I don't know. I feel like if I went up there and I was like, I must win or I must do this, it just wouldn't, that's too much. That's too much going on there. Yeah. So it's, just, it's almost like you're just completely relaxed in the mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really like to think about my race until I'm like on the block. Like I would rather run up to the block and get on and dive in then like sit there and like get in the zone you know but there's there's points in in races where it's like you, you know they make you get to the ready room early and you have to kind of sit there so is that is that painful for you to kind of get there early and have to go through that uh i think i've like learned ways to manage that sure. like listening to music is something that like i love to do not just like behind the blocks but like around the house in the car that's like one of my favorite things i love like music and finding new music so mm. that's something that that's a tool that i use before races like coming up with like cool playlists or like scrolling through my spotify and like oh that's a nice one or like mm. um sometimes if i have a friend in the ready room like and they also like to like chat a little chat with them mm -hmm. but you don't want to take them out of their race plan so yeah, yeah i think just like finding different things and yeah. Well, let me finish on this. Um, Jack Roach sent me a message today after he knew that you were gonna we were gonna talk today, and he just said you're the best. You know. So, what, what, how's your relationship with Jack? How did that develop over the years? Yeah, I love Jack. Um, I got to know him like pretty decently well in Dubai at Junior Worlds in 2013. Mm -hmm. That was my like first big junior team trip, um, and I got like pretty sick there. So Jack was like always like making sure I was okay and like kind of helping me out through that um and ever since then like he he's been someone that I've always gone to when I'm having something having a hard time with the sport having a good time good time with the sport Jack's like always been there for me and yeah. you know when I was choosing making my college decision Jack was always there to support me and help mm. talk things through with me um when I was going through my neck issues he was texting and calling me and my parents and being like how can i support what can i do mm. how can i help you know he's always been there for me every step of the way and my first big national team trip he was there to support and you know there's just there aren't that many people like that that through the good and bad and i don't see him on a day-to-day -day basis but i know he's always there um yeah so jack's awesome he's very special and i'm really grateful for him and you know, he's just like someone that I want to like, I aspire to be like, and mm. someone I like to be around. And 
you know, it's cool how many people in the swimming world you'll talk to that like have that same impression of Jack that he's just like an amazing guy. And yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. I love Jack too. So I'm, I'm glad we could leave it at that, but listen, yeah. um, really appreciate your being vulnerable today and opening up and talking about some, some of the, the challenges that you face, but also the exciting um, parts of the future. And, and listen, good luck uh, for you. the for the ISL. I'm sorry I can't be there I with know, you this time. I know, I miss you out there. I know, I'm bummed. But, um, but <laughs> no, I'll, for us. yeah, I'll, I'll be cheering for sure. I can't wait to watch you race. So um, <laughs> loved it last year. So listen, thanks again. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. All right, take care, Katie. Bye.